In this video, we're going to take a look at how we can use the custom pass framework in the high definition render pipeline to manipulate how our scene is rendered. A custom pass is a C -sharp script that we can inject into the high definition render pipeline during its render loop to define and control the characteristics of how we would like the objects in our scene rendered. We can use a custom pass to change materials on scene geometry, change the draw order of the objects on screen, and read camera buffers for use in our shaders. Let's take a look at how we can build a custom pass in Unity and manipulate our scene. Custom passes can be created by adding a custom pass volume into our scene. Custom pass volumes work similarly to the standard volumes framework. However, custom pass volumes cannot blend with one another, and the data for the custom pass is stored on a game object rather than as an asset in your project. Let's add a custom pass volume by going to game object, choosing volume, custom pass. We can assign multiple passes to the same volume. To create a new pass on this volume, we can select the plus button and choose between the two built-in custom passes. Let's add a new draw renderer's custom pass and call it gloss replacement. In our overrides, let's assign this material and see what our palace would look like if it were coated with gold. We can change the injection point to adjust the stage in the render loop our custom pass is processed. A custom pass can be injected at six different stages within the high definition render pipeline's rendering loop. It's worth noting that an injection point doesn't define exactly where a pass will be executed and will only guarantee that a certain list of buffers will be available for read or write. For a more detailed breakdown of the render injection points and how the settings of a custom pass affect rendering, we can use the frame debugger window. The frame debugger window gives a breakdown of each stage of the rendering in Unity and is a great way to get a detailed understanding of each stage of the render loop. The frame debugger window can be found by choosing Window, Analysis, Frame Debugger, and choosing the Enable button. Each entry in the list shows a chronological list of the stages of rendering, and selecting an entry in the list will allow you to preview the render at that stage. Changing the injection point will cause your render pass to move up or down the list accordingly. This is currently a little bit overwhelming, so let's reduce the influence of our pass down from the entire palace and direct it onto the statue here. In the filter section, let's change the layer mask from default to just our statue layer. Now our statue is lined with gold and it looks a little bit more believable. Custom passes are a great way to isolate effects onto specific objects in a scene like this. I've created a glow shader and shader graph that I'd like to apply to our statue. When I apply it to the custom pass, I really like how it creates this moving glow effect on the edges of the statue, but I don't like how it looks on the entire statue. I'd like to use it to create a halo outline effect and have the statue still render on top. We can create another custom pass to control this. In our custom pass volume, let's add another pass and call it statue overlay. And in the filters, set the layer mask to statue. Then in our replacement pass, let's override the depth and make sure the depth test is set to less equal and that the write depth toggle is disabled. So we don't write this pass to the depth buffer. Now, it just looks like our statue is being drawn. However, I've added a scale multiplier to the vertex position on the glow shader. If we scale this value up, we can see that our glow effect is being rendered first and the statue is then being drawn back on top. We could even assign a different material to our statue pass and have multiple extra shaders drawn at once. Stacking passes like this is a great way to create detailed and interesting rendering effects. One of the other cool things we can do with custom render passes is an entire full screen pass. This can be great for special effects, transitions, or full screen overlays. I've created a custom full screen shader by going to Shader, HDRP, Custom Full Screen Pass, and created a material from it. By default, the shader renders the screen color and radius. I've made a simple edit to the shader so that we can pass it in a color from the material and multiply the color into the final result. Let's create a new global custom pass volume called Screen Tint. We want the effect to occur on the screen after rendering everything else. So let's set the injection point to after post process. Then let's add a new full screen pass and call it Color Multiply. Let's drag it into our full screen material. And now when we change the color on our material, it tints the screen. This can be an easy way to show a player taking damage simply by toggling the volume on or off. By changing our volume from global to local, we could also use this effect to signal a dangerous area of our scene 
and change the color of the screen whenever the camera enters the volume. In a script, we can tween the color on the material to or from black whenever one of these buttons is pressed, creating a simple but effective fade transition. Custom passes and custom pass volumes are a powerful way for us to control the rendering of the high definition render pipeline. For even more complex rendering effects, such as accessing more than one buffer or working with compute shaders, we can extend the custom pass class and script our own passes. For more information on custom passes, custom pass volumes, and the custom pass scripting API, follow the link in the description below. Thanks for watching.